Now, I have the i7. I don't have the i9. And I made a strategic choice not to get the i9. First, it's a lot more, it's more money. And obviously, you know, I went out of pocket for all these. And again, for those that are joining us late and are not familiar with my channel, Samsung did not send these. These are not review units. I purchased these with my own money. The one I did last week and these two today are purchased with my own money. So, so Core i7, 13700H, RTX 4050 GPU, discrete GPU for those wondering. So with that set up, let's get this out of the box. So once again, we have some pretty nice packaging here. And like we saw last week with the Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360, the 16 inch convertible, this one has uh, pretty much the same type of look in the unboxing so far, but I definitely can feel a lot more heft on this one. And there's good reason for that with the discrete GPU. We have some documentation. I don't think we really care about that. We have a USB-C charging cable. We'll get to that in a moment or when we plug it in. And then of course we get a more robust charger, a super fast or it says super. Yeah, it does say super fast charge adapter and that's that. And that's pretty much it. There's no S Pen. There's no touch screen on this. And then of course we have this. And this is the, of course, the graphite color. It's a uh, solid metal, really great build quality. And I can tell you right away, this thing is absolutely gorgeous. It is even better than I remembered at the event that I went to, and you can see it here. Now, for those wondering, let's see, can we open it up with one finger? Yes, we can. It's gonna be a glossy display. So no S Pen on this, whoever is asking that. Now, the keyboard is pretty much the same layout as what we saw on the 360. Bit shallow, but it feels good. Fingerprint scanner is over here. Now, if you wanna see the back of it, there it is. And very clean looking. Let's move this to the side here. Very clean looking and it is gonna track fingerprints, okay? So one of the things about the graphite model as opposed to the beige, you'll see more fingerprints. It's a pretty right. nice looking device. Now, as far as the laptop, it's very clean looking, very, very sleek. Earlier, the numpad is definitely going to be um, not great here because of the narrowness of it, not a great layout. So I would prefer not to have this. Uh, very glossy display, so we'll get into that in a moment. Let's check out the ports. We'll start off on the left side where you get an HDMI port, two USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 ports. So that's good to see. And on the right side is a micro SD card reader. Now, I kind of wish it was a full size on a 16 inch, kind of surprised they went with a micro SD card. And then a full size USB-A port and then a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack. So that is the port selection on it. Not too bad. Although, again, I would have liked to have a full-size SD card reader. That would have been great. The keyboard, like I said, it's a bit on the shallow side. It definitely has good tactility. It definitely has good feedback. But as far as the shallowness, yeah, it's a little bit shallow. It's okay. Um, it's cold because it just got delivered and it's a little bit cold out here in Las Vegas. In fact, it started to snow a little bit. Looks wobbly, let's take a look. So let's see if there's a lot of screen wobble. Uh, not. A, I don't think it's as bad as the uh, 360, but the hinges are good. The hinges are good. A Little bit of screen wobble, you know? You're moving it, it does move a little bit. I think it looks worse because of the, the, the glossiness, the reflection of this display. Let me go to this one. Let's plug this in. I got too many cameras working, I, I, I think. You can go as far back as you see here. So it can go only as far back as there. It's not a convertible and it doesn't have a 180 degree hinge like some other laptops. Wow, that is a glossy display. Not surprising, we had it on the other one. Let's go through yes. And then you can see it here, what I'm doing. Put myself down there, uh, United States. Now again, this will have a fingerprint as far as logging in with biometrics with Windows Hello. Okay, it's gonna check for some updates here. All right, so let's uh, set up the fingerprint reader here. 
Looks like it's uh, pretty seamless. I got to move it a little bit. Make sure your sensor's clean. There we go. And that's it. Pretty nice. I mean, this is absolutely gorgeous. You can see that this is the graphite. Again, it shows fingerprints, but you know, the beige, and I don't know, I don't see, I didn't see the ultra coming in beige. So it would be nice if it did have that. Um, but you can see here, it's actually pretty sleek looking, very MacBook-esque. Now the build quality is really good. And I, I mentioned this on the 360 that I did last week. The build quality is very MacBook-esque. And say what you want about Apple, they make great hardware in terms of the build. And this is very similar into that. It's really solid, has some heft to it, but it feels premium, that's for sure. And that's been pretty good. All right, I'm gonna sign into my Microsoft account real quick so I can get that going. Tell you what, I'm really liking this so far. Let me just get that uh, done. We got a super chat from Daria Daria. We'll get to that in a moment. Appreciate all the love and support, folks. Okay. And let's get that onto the broadcast here. Comp man with a $10 super chat. All right. We're rocking and rolling tonight, folks, on the brand new Samsung Galaxy Book uh, Book 3 Ultra. Okay. Yeah, I like it, people. All right. Let me set my pin. Let me do that real quick off camera. Okay. And oops, uh, let's go to six there and then there. Okay. Miss Master Fung is here. Okay, screen has a lot of wobble. Uh, there's some wobble. I've noticed it. Not not too bad. It looks worse because of the glossiness. But yeah, it, it moves a little bit. Moves a little bit. Okay, so let's hit next, next, yada, yada, yada. Okay. I'm going to skip this. And we're going to get through this initial boot here. And then maybe run a couple of benchmarks and then we'll move over to the other one and we'll come back to this maybe we'll see how that all goes i'm not going to connect my phone because i'm going to use the samsung connect or they to use the uh, quick share feature so we're going to connect all that i don't need the microsoft 365 all that blah 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 battery life so i did run some battery tests on that 76 watt hour battery on the book 3 pro 360 and I'm going to talk about it in the full review. I would say it's it's okay. It's not going to be the greatest, but it's okay. And I'll talk more about it. And again, it'll depend if you're going to use 120 hertz as opposed to the dynamic refresh rate as opposed to 60 hertz. So you'll have to see. All right. No, the screen wobble is not that bad. It's just because of the reflections make it look worse. I mean, you can really see it here. You know, it moves a little bit, moves a little bit. And again, some people are not going to leave the numpad because it moves things over a little bit. This is not a P-series. This is H. This is 45 watts. So according to Intel's website, it's got uh, 14 cores. That's six performance cores and eight efficiency cores for a total of 14, 20 threads. And it's 45 watts. And it's got a maximum turbo power of 115 watts and minimum assured power of 35 watts. So their claim, that's that's according to their website. And I'm gonna also put it on the performance mode. So I'm gonna hit function and the F11. So I'm at high performance right now. This has a maximum graphics power of 60 watts. So don't expect a lot of graphics horsepower out of this. Looks like the, the, the maximum is gonna be 60 watts out of this 4050 GPU. That's exactly what I thought it was the case. This is an absolutely gorgeous display. They're calling it a dynamic AMOLED 2X display. But if you go to the display settings and we wanna take a look at, and I don't like 200, I'd like to go down to 175. It's a little too big, 200 scaling and 200%. So if I go to advanced display settings, right now it's on dynamic. It's gonna switch between 60 and 120. I'm gonna put it on 120, keep the changes here. It'll look a little bit more smoother for me in real life. It'll feel a lot more fluid. All right, so here's, a, here's one we always look at. This is HDR and it's showing HDR for those wondering. And I'm gonna put it into, right now it's 1080p. I'm gonna put it into 4K. And I can tell you in person, it looks absolutely spectacular. It's gorgeous. Really deep blacks, super vibrant colors, all the hallmarks of an OLED display are here. 
they do, you know, Samsung's, they're the best at this. You know that. So I'm not surprised. So the camera looks pretty good here. So I'm not surprised because this is going to be a 1080p camera. Let me go to the settings. And you have the different, like we saw in the last one, it has the different settings here. So this is 1920 by 1080, to about 2.1 megapixels according to this. And I could do 60 frames per second. So now it matches our stream, 60 frames per second. And you could also do some effects here. You can do face effects. So right now it's off. We got subtle. And then we have smooth. And strong. And it makes me look absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> not. not. <laughs> and then the background effect. So we can do the blur. We showed this last time on the 360 we did last week. And then we can do color. Let's do a red background. And then you could also do auto framing and all, the, all that. So that looks pretty good. All right. Well, let's shut this down. And we're going to open this sucker up. Hopefully this won't give me too much problems. Let's see. Now this one came off really easily. This one comes off really easily. So that's easy, folks. That's all you need to do. These, these are removable and they're easily put back on, but I don't want to put them out of place. So let's put these to the side. Hopefully this will not give me too much trouble. Once you get it started, it should be pretty easy. Okay, we're done. That was pretty easy. Made me a little nervous at first, but that's always the case. And you know, pretty, pretty okay there. Let's take a put that to the side. All right, let's take a look at what we have here. So two fans for cooling. Okay, you got your SSD here. You've got your your battery here. Let me see. And seventy six watt hours. So it's the same battery that we saw convertible that we looked at the sixteen, which is right over there. So this is a four cell battery. And it looks like there's a second M.2 right over here. And I didn't see this on the other one, but I could be wrong on the convertible. There was a space there, but there were things on top of here. There's vapor chamber here, by the way. You notice that? So there's a second slot for the SSD, and we like the speeds that we got so far. Soldered uh, Wi-Fi 6E, I believe this is 5.3, on soldered onto the motherboard and everything else is soldered in. So no RAM upgrade here or anything like that. But unlike the Mac, you can upgrade the SSD. And not only can you upgrade the SSD, you have a second M.2 slot for a second SSD. Love that, that's, that's fantastic. What do you think, folks? Do you like the Ultra so far? So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.